the first talk of this session is Stephen Seven talking about the less obvious uses of SQLite. Thank you, Theo. So, hi. Uh, okay, I'm Stephen. I work at TechLot. Wondering. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I am obviously a Python developer. Uh, I really work sorry, I seem to jump the editor. Um, and I work at the catalog team at TechLot. So, basically, we get uh, information from our suppliers. And they say, oh, we've got this piece of merchandise, and this is a specific, and then we um, process it because it's good in our database. That's making it oversimplifying it a lot, actually. There's a lot of little extra business and good things there as well. Um, so, yeah, basically, um, uh, what uh, I'm going to talk about is a few uh, few things about what people like is. Um, and who, uh, what, who uses it, and also some use cases that I actually haven't seen in production that often, which I kind of think is, might be a good idea, which good application for people. Um, <coughs> and of course, this will all be Python, which is quite interesting, as well. Um, so, um, yeah, so who uses SQLite? Um, Airbus uses it uh, for running their planes. Uh, Skype, if you check your uh, one of your profile files, uh, actually the directory can actually have a uh, SQLite table um, there with all your <coughs> annotations and things there. It's really nice and secure. And then uh, Mozilla and um, Fire and has Firefox and Thunderbird. And also, I don't know about Thunderbird, but I said Thunderbird, but well, I did not check Firefox, but you actually obviously got a browser history because they're in the SQLite table. You know, people join them together and go, oh, we went here at this time. Is this website also very nice and secure. So, um, and of course Apple has it, you know, it's on your phone, it's even if Android phones has it. It's, it's because of that, it is, oh, it's safe. That was the same as people on phone. Um, I'm not sure it's, it is really essential to the same function, they actually don't say, but maybe it's just for logging or something, I don't know. Um, so, um, so, what is SQL? Uh, well, it's basically a, a, a database technology that runs on a single file. Um, and it's a uh, big piece of client side use. So it means that you, uh, if you are going to connect to this tool database over the network, you should probably not do that because you have MySQL, you have Postgres, you have other things that are better suited to that. So, um, yeah, so, but the why you do this is, of course, the rest of the discussion. Um, so, uh, so it's just a D library, which, uh, but it's integrated with Python, which is nice, so you can just say, so I find you guys know it already, so yeah, it just sort of covers the basis. Um, and it is dynamic as fuck, which is weird for your database to do, but for the blurge and relation all the database is special. Um, yeah, so it's deep. It is also, um, according to the website, and uh, it seems logic that it is the most easily, most widely used database uh, technology in the world because of where it, all the places it's running. Um, and it apparently it doesn't compete with the quite equal Postgres, it competes with uh, if open, well, with the original things that if open, we use Python, so you know, open, so, you know. Um, yeah, so there are a few ways you can use this. Uh, there's the in-memory version, so there's a little double colon net with memory in between there. That's pretty much how you would uh, use an in-memory database that runs because the context manager will be the project manager, the database is here. Yeah, and um, so then of course the file based version is exactly like the other one, except you actually give it a file name instead of the special memory uh, and syntax. So that's <coughs> cool. And then of course the database exists afterwards, after the, the context manager flows. So um, yeah, and of course it uh, supports RSC, so you, you can actually say, so that listen, supports RSC beginning of your connection and then actually go and use it and it's pretty good, it's pretty nice. Thing. So um, because I work in catalog, I deal with a lot of flat files. I do a lot of CSV and things that are really horrible for reference and theory. Uh, so that's why it's just kind of a uh, bit of an interesting point for me to still keep life thing. Um, because um, the flat files are not as legit as people like those files or databases and things. They're actually more generic than flat files. I will not 
pretty like, much bitter in the things that it said. It's uh, very new fun. You know, I've had a couple of times where I had to deal with CSV, and then yeah, you have a um, Windows say CSV, and then uh, and then it has to open up on a Linux based thing, and then it doesn't cover the same new line format or something, and it's just the same result. So that's kind of a nasty one. Uh, blocks, that's another thing that CSV can't do. So you can actually store binary data in your CSV like data. So that's um, pretty neat. You have, um, so yeah, I could say, store images and audio in your CSV like file if you want. And uh, it's file size is only 240 terabytes, so it's not much of a limit. Yeah. If, you, if you have a dark that, 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 that big, then you should probably do something that can shard and do backup. And probably you don't want to use a bunch of people, use people like that. Anyway, um, yeah, that has great uh, query support, so it's great support for the SQL language, which not all dark space systems do. Um, like my people, <laughs> not correct. So, um, so one one of the things is that, and I only recently learned about myself, and and surprisingly, I I I I thought that it's something that I didn't need to hear about, like everyone else knows about, is common table. So, I can't even hear. I should know about common table expressions. So it's not terribly many people. Um, okay, so I hope you Thing, probably. Um, so yeah, basically a common table expression. This is something that's existed for years in most databases. And for me, that, they, that mainly uses my people, it's just this new, you know, I know, it's, it's, it's not even it's not like 1990, I guess. So um, yeah, so common table expression is basically, um, it's like, like using the right table, but the syntax makes it so that you can actually um, declare more complex queries in an easier way. Um, it's kind of like, it's almost like um, you think of functions, how functions actually extract the, the, the complexity out of the main, main function, uh, of your main, uh, yeah, your main function. So it's kind of like that. So it kind of picks out some of that complexity. Um, and also, like, kind of like functions, not that it's the same thing as a function, um, is that it allows for different calls, which is kind of cool. Um, so, okay, here's an example of a very simple uh, uh, TPM, sorry, common table expression. So this common table expression is um, basically it's very, well, very trivial actually. It's, all it does is it returns, um, it's basically just that select space. It's a substitution for that so select space. So you can actually, it's very, you know. Um, so but you can actually build on that. So you can actually go, you know, it's the same one, but it has a few siblings to it. So let me just add to my mouse there. So it actually has an um, NR0 on the original slide, and you added these uh, extra ones that actually do other things, and they actually join on the original content script. So you can actually reuse things and do all kinds of other things. And uh, here I've been tied in case of these uh, and ties and yeah. So, so you can then basically make this uh, the next stage of anything you want using the golden box you've just established, which is neat. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so uh, one of the cool examples I've seen of uh, using the common table expression is with recursion. So, uh, for instance, here you have a uh, recursive Fibonacci uh, implementation. So, you're actually, this is a Fibonacci theory that's being generated in a SQL language, which is pretty neat. So, um, if you squint, you can kind of see where it's, how it's, how it's recursive. Because here you define the common table expression, there you reuse the same thing that you've just named it. So, it's kind of like a function that's calling itself. Um, uh, and of course, the initial condition for the Fibonacci is there, and then you just add the values as part of it. Yeah, so that's that's pretty neat and seems completely useless, but there it is actually um, an example that uses it. So now, um, uh, yeah, so here for instance, you have a table that just uh, represents for you a, a organization, and um, so for instance, you have names and boxes, and you can you know, do like employees in your box. You can say, listen, so Alice has two people who work directly under her, and then there are a bunch of people who work under them. And you want to point and see their uh, perspective, uh, the organization from her position onwards, and who works for who. So uh, you can do that. You can basically, after you set up the table, you can actually go and say, um, so who works for her? So then you can 
uh, okay, so I'll just add it. And so it's level zero. And then you uh, do this little very thing here. So basically, this is just a self join. And um, then you, okay, this is just some string magic, so you set it up nicely for the demonstration. Then, then you get that. So yeah, there are useful use, uh, useful places for this. We in, in the Headlock um, uh, team where I work, we actually have a lot of um, we have a head forty tree that is a hierarchy for in nature like that. So it's yeah, uh, it's there, but yeah, that's another story. Um, so yeah, uh, just for like uh, head tracing, head tracing, what are the So um, okay, so there are three long poles which are for gate tree poles. Um, that, which basically explains why I think people like to be used in, um, in general. So, for instance, there is what, what the creator of people like calls an application file format, which is not really a new thing, it's just he's kind of reappropriated it into his own little uh, idea. Um, and then, of the installation, and how to like and all of that, and then, of course, there's other stuff scripting uh, uh, that really could have benefited from, or will benefit from. Um, so, uh, yeah, so application file format is um, anything like an Excel spreadsheet or a PDF or a git repository directory or anything that basically says an application state after it's been switched off. So, um, or after it exists. Um, so, yeah, people like can fit into this case. If you have something that actually um, because, for instance, uh, with uh, Excel spreadsheets, you have something that's relational in a sense too. You have your information that's stored, and then you have in, inside an Excel file, there's a bunch of XML that references this other XML inside the same file. And uh, so, but XML, as far as I can tell, doesn't enforce in preparation integrity like, like that. It's all the application's job to do that. So, if you like, that actually goes into the, the, the system. So you, this is something that the application developer doesn't have to write and code, which is really great to use, obviously. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, let's see here. Okay, so, um, so, yeah, so basically based on this, you, so you have Excel, and then, for instance, you need that referential integrity type idea, so that's what foreign keys is nice, people like that, that. And you have binary data, so you talk to people like that, that as well. So, um, yeah, the next example, I actually, um, I, uh, I'm probably, probably going to show my age a little bit. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> um, so when Zoom came out, they, it came out a few years before people like was created. Um, and what Zoom came up with, well, Chuck Carmack, whoever, uh, came up with was a, um, a thing called the WAD file. Now, WAD file is exactly what I was describing now. It's something that is relational. It uh, stores uh, binary data, stores, stores everything. It's, it's actually called uh, where it's called the data. Oh. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it basically stores all that binary data into something called um, NUP. And, um, well, yeah, that's what the secret is. Uh, so, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's just lump, it's just, it's just binary chunks. In there, and um, yeah, so basically, a wide file structure is very simplistic actually. It's just a header, and then the header points to an index, and then the index in its turn points to a lump, and a lump, and another lump, and so of course, you get the idea. So, um, yeah, so what I did is I took the wide file and I actually parsed it. Um, so it's a little bit of Python, a little bit of SQLite, I actually have parsed it the way I did this. Um, so, yeah, I'll show you how I did that. Well, could be what I used. So yeah, basically there are two two things that you need to parse for to, for this specific instance. It's the vertices, which is uh, kind of uh, for a level. So it's just a point, but that's a level of vertices within. And then the line, which uh, of course is between the vertices. But that that information is stored separately. And um, yeah, so that is. Um, yeah, so basically that is. Um, so how I use how I parse this. I use a uh, combination of main tuples and structs. Now, that's another thing I'd like to ask. Who knows, who uses main tuples generally? Is that, is that a thing people do? Generally or generally or before? Both, actually. <laughs> <laughs> do you do these parties as a receiver? I have to 
think I'll find out what we're finish. So, uh, yeah, so I, I use nature, I hope. I, I think that's you. Um, uh, so, yeah, but uh, basically it just, it makes things a lot more readable, I feel. Um, and uh, of course, struct is pretty nice. Well, struct library, struct module. Um, just to give you an idea what they do, or how I like, work using together, is you have your, um, yeah, for instance, you can define your, uh, I'd like to say, let's say I'm defining a pixel. So you define a pixel, and it has an X and a Y coordinate and a color. That's basically how I, that, that's my interface. And then I say, okay, so I want to create a pixel at position um, X10, Y20, color red. And so then that is created for me. I can um, then say, okay, dot X, or I can say zero, or I can say, you know, I can access it like a couple, I can access it like an object. Really very versatile mode. Right? And um, in the actual struct documentation, they show an example that actually uses this. So struct, what struct does is it takes binary code, it's going to give it a little bit of a markup here. So you see it's little Indian, short, short, short. So three shorts and, uh, and it's in little Indian encoded. And you can just sub into, uh, uh, basically it'll read that and it turns into a list with three values, which will be short. Um, so yeah, then you basically put, put it in uh, your name sample or unpack, and you've got another pixel, which is cool. Then you can go do that. So that's just an example. So um, in this example, let me express it here myself. Um, yeah, there is one of these um, vertexes I, I'm storing um, as as actually a three values, even though there's still yeah. two values in the last one, the two shorts and also the little Indian. And then in the bottom you have seven shorts, little Indian, um, for the lines. So you have line data, you have the vertex data, you have the track list of the use that's right on the data there. And then I store it in little SQL I got space that looks like that. It's a cute little foreign key thing. Uh, so yeah, so basically it doesn't make sense to have a line that doesn't have some of the it's pretty much standard. So um, okay, mine does actually have more information than that. I'm just um, I'm just showing the stuff that you know proves my point. So um, yes, uh, yeah. So basically, um, well, the reason I did all this was because I wanted to show that SQLite can, when you create your own, well, when you create a file format based on SQLite, you have a lot of powerful um, ways to get that information out of you. So you can just write the SQL. So I uh, went to bounce check. So um, since the dots are all over the place, and it's not exactly zero centered. So um, you can actually, well, it is zero centered, but it's, yeah, you don't know how big your wind view window should be, for instance. So you can actually write a little query that actually does that. So here I actually wrote a little um, query that has X and Y that gets the width and height of the, the box, or the box, and um, yeah, it's basically very useful. I, the lines you can even uh, get out. Uh, so you actually did a specific inner joint between the line and the two vertexes, and there I got, uh, yeah, so then I basically have a whole series of lines that do come together, comes your map. So this is actually something I've printed out, and then I try to fix it, I think it's the other thing. Um, but yeah, it's also that it's very small, but it's actually all annotations I've added in order to see what what position it was um, in the web file, sort of thing. So yeah, that was basically, so uh, what I'm trying to basically say is that people like can be, it's very versatile. You can use it for store well, space in this case. Um, and binary data, this is for this easily, so um, you can use this for instance, if you want to store a thing that's just a string, if you just do that, otherwise you can, um, if, if it's a binary file, then, uh, or binary piece of code, or something that you need to put in and it's just it's just a uh, some Python SQLite three a binary and then whatever binary code it is you want to put in there. Uh, so that's that's it. Um yeah. So uh, then there's another thing uh, we have I, I uh, try to we we have we're working with different terms at work but it's a little bit complicated because we we, we over those terms sometimes a little bit. So I try to to um, these terms that uh, and use an example that kind of fits to, to what I'm trying to explain. So, uh, yeah, so we have, for instance, a feed file, uh, which is something that um, uh, 
uh, gives you a list of products and who provides uh, that product. So a lot of products can be used. Can, uh, one product can have lots of products. That's basically what this one of that. Um, so it looks like this. So let's see that oh, from this product comes from those two people, for instance. Um, there's a long list of them. There's just pick the top, the top bunch of them. And so, uh, yeah, the job here was to actually group them all together and uh, make batches out of them based on uh, per ID product. So I had all the suppliers together for that one product. Um, so that's actually something we're beginning to do at the moment. Um, so, yeah, um, we, what currently are we doing is, is something along the lines of this. So let's um, just use a default dict and a tick. So we are a tick of default. Default dict of tick. Yeah. So, um, uh, okay, so if I'm to mention the top tier is unnecessary, but I did it so that we match my next example a little bit better. So that's why, that's why is that, because that looks like that, and I didn't just use uh, the default dict directly. Um, so, what this thing basically is supposed to do is it's supposed to basically uh, add all the values of the supplier together as a tick. So if you don't have duplicate suppliers, you don't want duplicate IDs in, in for each product. And uh, yeah, we have some output set, which if I keep constant for the same thing, it's just something that does a bit of work, it makes it makes it a delay and uses up yeah, just does a bit of work. So um, yeah, then the TSP parsing is also very straightforward. It's just take the TSP and turn it into that experience. So that's actually what I just um, yes, so the SQLite version is a little bit more complex. Uh, you basically spread schemas, uh, do that. and so just ID product, ID supplier, and then you uh, do a TSP part, like with the dictionary, dot, dot add text thing, except this time it's an insert, straight insert, and um, yes. Then you, yeah, then of course the suppliers, when we get to the suppliers, are no longer just uh, dot items of the dictionary, now it's an actual SQL query. So we actually have to get the distinct list of all the suppliers and um, spit them out into, yeah, so basically here we actually get, get the same result out, the same format of result out. Um, so, yes. Yeah. Okay, maybe I made a mistake there, but because yeah, uh, it was I did this all in Python three, and then I saw the slides didn't fit with a big deal from, so I see now there I made an error there. So, <laughs> so yeah, this is actually uh, that doesn't make sense because that's going to send out the entire list, which I don't actually want. I actually want to send it in little, little, uh, little like break it up, duplicate the ID product for the supplier. So that's a bit of a mistake, Michael. But um, yeah, the code is. I'm just going to check my slides here that don't know that. So um, yeah, the file, uh, basically I did it twice, uh, once for in memory, once for on disk, and then I compared it to the simple default implementation. And um, yeah, there you go, the three approaches, and then I um, made a little prop, just to see what, what's the time for it, and it doesn't look good for SQLite apparently, because SQLite's taking a bit longer. Um, so, See there, your uh, this is the memory, the memory one, and the file version. <coughs> both are taking twice as long to do the same type of thing as uh, the, that's just the default text one. Okay, that's that's not correct. But it is memory one is a bit better. So uh, here is the default text version, and then on the bottom is the in memory SQLite dot space and the um, in, on the file SQLite dot space. And um, yeah, it's Quite, quite nice. It, it actually shows much, much better with memory. Um, so, yes. And then, um, yeah, so that's the summary. Uh, the speed for people like this uh, is not as good as the Python dictionaries, but the memory usage is less, so that's, that's good. And if you put a table on memory one, sorry, on hard drive one, on the system one, and you can actually just persist and stay there. It's not like your power dies and you don't have to do the interrupt over. And of course, it can be queried. So that is also a pretty neat addition. Well, <coughs> queried like, properly, like with fancy SQL things. Um, so, yeah.
um, that is, so yeah, we uh, pulled ahead in the case where we had some information that we need to write. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so, hmm. yes, we have, so we have a, uh, basically uh, some images that need to be extracted from the file. And uh, we basically took these files out of product feed file that actually tells you, oh, here's this product, but this time it tells you our know, images that are associated with it. And um, originally, we actually, um, the idea was to get the images uh, from on both site server as specified by this file, uh, but it but need to get only the new ones, and it needed to batch, batch the, uh, the files it gets for processing first, and that's all kinds of requirements. So we uh, used Bash for, uh, for it initially because it's, it's a great thing to do quickly, which okay, turns out quickly doesn't always be maintainable. Uh, so yeah, here we have, so basically I just checked that the file existed <coughs> um, and then it set up some HTTP script, so it's a script that generates scripts, if you were, if you missed that. And then, uh, and then the script that was generated was compared to the previous script that was generated Anyway, so it was kind of like a left join. And um, yeah, so it wasn't good. So basically, and then that difference between the two scripts was, was uh, batched. And actually, so that was used for the curl to get the each image. So uh, yeah, the comparison here is basically the comparison is done uh, from batch magic. So you have some files get spiked, and then the basically two files get compared, and then after it gets spiked into a script file, it looks very crazy. And um, so yeah, the SQL version not as terse, that's for sure, but it's it's explicit, and that's kind of iconic, right? Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, you, 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 I can see, you can see it as a join, right? That's a join. That's basically you see, oh, it's a left join, you know, right? So you can see the difference because you're checking on something that's you know checking for nulls. So, so then it gets inserted into a different. So that join gets created and then gets put into a different. Script which is basically the same thing. And it's just, I, I, yeah, it just seems more easier. Now batching is another thing. So we have the DCP thing that we run and it gets batched and it wasn't great. Now, okay, I can actually need to write some scrolling. So I took the effective part and did the batching. And then, uh, to be honest, it was me. I did this, this is wrong. Uh, well, this is not good. Uh, apparently it's this command and I mixed it does this for you. So, <laughs> so yeah, that is me. But, um, so yeah, but that actually goes, takes a list, um, makes a little, makes chunks out of that, and puts it onto the FTP data center. So it actually can things by FTP. So that's, that's pretty nice. So um, no, well, it wasn't as maintained as well. This, I think I would have preferred. So they were actually do a little bit of a pagination thing. And I'd say, oh, you know, this little window link says little window of thing. And just, yeah, that, that to me seems like a very good idea. Or should this is something that I'm supposed to do now. And um, yeah, so like I said, I'm very terse. But this is, and it imports some formulas, which is also cool. So you can actually alter the table um, and then add a while well, the latest flag, for instance, and then write, make queries based on that. So it can actually, it's just more extensible. Um, yeah, so yeah, just some takeaways. Um, yeah, so I've been underused by you. Um, and in Python, it makes it easier to, to work with because you can do all kinds of lovely things with context managers. I love context managers. Um, so they are basically sort of in here. Uh, SQLite doesn't, for, doesn't know, remember to keep on foreign keys. So you can just say, oh, here, yeah, keep on foreign keys and then send me a curse to work or a connection to work with and then you can actually go and do that. This is a bad example because we're not actually using the connection anyway. Okay, well, you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, that's me. Okay, do we have any questions? Okay, in which case, let's thank our speaker, and we have a bit of time to kill before the next talk. <laughs>